Hi guys, your much awaited Q&A video is finally here. I'm sorry for the delay in this video. As you can see, I'm not in my city right now. But thank you for patiently watching all these videos and asking these amazing questions. So let's get into the Q&A part of it. The first video was on gut health. And I have a few questions that you asked me. The first one is how to take proton pump inhibitors, how to take those medicines, pentoprazole, pantop, rantag, all those medicines. So you're basically supposed to take that medicine 30 minutes before your first meal on an empty stomach. So why 30 minutes? I'll explain that to you. So when you have that medicine, it takes 30 minutes for the drug to be absorbed by your bloodstream from your intestines to go through the liver, come back to your stomach canalically and get activated. So you have the medicine 30 minutes before you take the first meal. So that's how you take pentoprazole or any other proton pump inhibitor. Now, another question about the proton pump inhibitors I was asked is, what does irreversibly inhibit mean? I said in my video that proton pumps irreversibly inhibit your, the proton pumps in your stomach. So people are really concerned that they are never going to work again. So are we, like, is our health going to deteriorate if we take proton pumps? So it does not work like that. So the proton pump, the proton pump inhibitor inhibits, that won't work again, but your body constantly keeps making new proton pumps and your gastric acid secretion will be normal after you stop taking proton pump inhibitors. I hope that answers the question you asked. Now moving on to the next question. So I advocated having late breakfast to delay your breakfast as much as possible. So I said that because what I was trying to advocate is a ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. So if you have your first meal at 12 and your last at 6 in the evening, so you have food for like 6 hours, then you fast for 18 hours. So I was trying to advocate ketogenic diet with intermittent fasting. I'll make a video, a detailed video on that, but that what I advocated, the late breakfast, what I said, that is only for people who live sedentary lifestyles. You need to understand this part. If you're working, if you're like physical labor, if you're putting in physical labor, if you're going for a run in the morning or if you are going to the gym in the morning, then you have like high sugar demand in the morning. So you should definitely have a meal consisting of carbohydrates or sugars. So if you are into physical labor and you think you're doing some sort of physical activity that burns calories, then you should have your breakfast at the normal time with adequate amount of carbohydrate in that. And the last question from this video, the gut health video, I said it is okay to have tea or coffee in the morning while you are fasting, right? But what I forgot to mention is the tea and coffee I was talking about that is without sugar and without milk. So if you're having a black coffee or something like green tea, which does not have sugar or milk in it, then it's fine. But if you add sugar and milk to it, then it becomes, the calories obviously increase and that is not something I suggest you do. So those are all the questions from the gut health video. Moving on to my second video, which was about eggs. And I've gotten this question from a lot of people asking me which type of eggs are the best white eggs, brown eggs. I'd like to assure you that the color of the shell of the egg does not denote anything about its nutritional value. There is no significance regarding the color of the egg about its nutritional value. But that being said, there is something that matters in its nutritional value. Eggs are of different kinds. It can be free range eggs, it can be pasture raised eggs. It basically depends on the hen which lays the egg. How is it raised? If it was raised in a coop in which it could not move around and it was fed only a certain type of food, then the nutritional value of the egg goes down. So if you want to have the healthiest form of eggs, you would rather have free range eggs. The eggs from the hen which moved around and fed on insects and the diet of that hen was very diverse. This increased the nutritional value of the egg. So if you go out to the market and you want to buy eggs, make sure the eggs that you buy are free range eggs. Coming to the second question. This is what my vid entire video was about. The relationship between eggs and atherosclerosis. A lot of people have asked me, do eggs cause atherosclerosis? Do eggs cause cardiovascular disease? Now attached multiple studies regarding 
uh, eggs and their relationship with atherosclerosis. In my opinion, at least, the eggs do not cause atherosclerosis. For atherosclerosis to happen, there needs to be a liver pathology. There might be something wrong going on in your liver, which might cause atherosclerosis. The links to these multiple studies, which I advocated, is included in the description of the video on eggs. Make sure you check them out. Yeah, another question which I've been asked a lot is, what are the healthy forms of fats? What oils we should like include in our regular diet? Now, I personally use olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. And in my opinion, that is the healthiest form of oil you could like buy. Like in our Indian market, a lot of healthy oils are not available, but olive oil is almost available in every grocery store. So yeah, olive oil is very good for your health. There are some other forms also of healthy oils like canola oil, flaxseed oil, sunflower oil. They are very healthy. Yeah, I'd like to add something here. A lot of people believe that coconut oil and palm oils are very healthy. But as far as I know, coconut oil, partly hydrogenated oils and palm oil, they're not that healthy. I would recommend you consider like sunflower oil and extra virgin olive oil and avocado oil. Those are healthy fats and they'll improve your health drastically. So I've had a really interesting question about eggs on that video. Yeah, it was asked by someone called Satan and I'll read out his question. According to new research, trimethylene oxidase, a byproduct of choline, is a major contributor of cardiovascular disease. So he wanted to know my opinions about it. Something I love about this question is he, this person is very informed and I'd love to answer your question. So trimethylene oxidase is related to cardiovascular disease. But the amount of choline that you get from eggs and the byproduct, the trimethylene oxidase that is formed from the choline that you've gotten from the eggs is very, very low and it is definitely not going to cause any cardiovascular disease. This is a research that was done and as I was saying in my video, this is done by like marketing companies to like <laughs> make sure that you don't have eggs so that they can sell their expensive products. So I don't think having eggs is going to increase the trimethylene oxidase in your blood and like in turn cause cardiovascular disease. I don't, I'm not in favor of that study. Yeah, and there's a second part to his question too. Regular consumption of egg yolks increases the chance of diabetes. He read that somewhere. And if a diabetic person should consume eggs. Now, something you need to understand about diabetes is the diabetes we see around in society, the type 2 diabetes that is, is basically due to insulin resistance. Now, I'm going to make a video soon about insulin resistance and diabetes so that you get a better understanding of it. But for now, just understand that insulin resistance is caused by multiple spikes of insulin levels in your blood. So if you have, if you have a habit of snacking, if you have any food for that matter, multiple times, if you have multiple meals, it spikes your insulin multiple times, which in turn causes insulin resistance, which causes diabetes. So to answer your question, say then, eggs will not cause cardiovascular disease and it is safe for a diabetic patient to have X until unless he has some like, liver pathology along with the diabetes. It is safe for a diabetic patient to have X and eggs in itself will not cause cardiovascular disease. Now moving on to the video about lemons and I guess all of you know how healthy lemons are and I'm like yeah, you are all telling me more benefits of lemons and that was really nice of you. There was this really interesting question by someone called Ipshita and I'll read the question. Is lemon and hot water in empty stomach right, right after you wake up good for you? So she's basically asking if lemon and hot water is good for you immediately when you wake up before you have your meal. Now there are two things in this. So whether you should have lemon with hot water that's part of a question so lemons we are like suggesting lemons to improve your health because it is rich in vitamin c 
I said a lot about vitamin C in my video, so do check it out to get a better understanding of this question. So hot water to some extent denatures vitamin C. So if you have a choice, I would suggest that you take lemon water in like normal cold water, which will preserve the benefits of vitamin C. Now the second part of it was, if you should have it on an empty stomach, in my opinion, it is very good for you to have lemon water in an empty stomach. Why? Because lemon water, it stimulates the secretion of gastric juices. So if you have lemon water early in the morning, immediately after you wake up, it will stimulate the secretion of gastric juices, which in turn will help with your digestion when you have food. So those are all the questions. Thanks a lot for asking these amazing questions and attentively listening to my videos. Thank you so much and the next video is going to come out really soon. Stay happy, stay healthy.